G'day. In this series of videos, we are going to model a psychometric function. Let me just go back up the top to this um, document. We are going to, from scratch, from nothing, using a Python programming language, we are going to build a um, an in silico experiment where we expose our uh, our subject who lives in the computer chip. <laughs> we're going to expose our subject to a certain number of stimulus intensities and we're going to measure how many times correct or what's the probability they got that correct. And so we're going to, to use a, a computer model or a mathematical model to essentially mimic what we would expect to see in the real real life. Now we use these quite a lot, particularly if we're going to eventually do some curve fitting or we're going to see whether or not a Gaussian function fits the data best or a Gumbel or a Viable or a logistic. Okay, So uh, modeling is, is really helpful. But I also think there's a lot of um, underlying programming principles and just um, scientific principles that, that you know, really lend themselves um, to, you know, taking this sort of um, process and pulling it apart and sort of putting it back together. That's what I'm going to try and do here in this um, series of videos. So what have I done? I've opened up Visual Studio Code. I've saved a blank file as a .py file. We're using Python version 3 here. And I've created a doc string here. You can see uh, uh, here's just a doc string. And all I've done is I've pretty much just vomited out just some ideas. Hey, Andrew, uh, what am I going to need here to create this model? Okay. Uh, there's, we can see what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's about six points here. And I'm going to try and split this up into about six videos. I'm going to try, try and keep, keep each video as about as short as possible. But by the end of the day, end of these videos, what we should have is um, we should be able to run a, an experiment, an in silico experiment, where we expose our subject to as many trials as we want at a certain number of stimulus intensities, and then plot, hey, um, what do they uh, are their responses similar to a Gaussian? And we're going to also learn how to generate that Gaussian um, curve or that Gaussian function. Okay, so six uh, videos. If you've read these here, um, if you want to jump forward, jump forward to the ones that are interesting. Interesting. But in this video, we're going to start um, with this first point. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate some samples from the uniform distribution. Now, these samples are like our pretend subject responses. And we're going to use the uniform distribution um, to mimic, hey, um, this is what our subject responded on this trial or that trial. And it will become, uh, become relevant later on, um, just uh, how we use these uniform distributions. Sorry, excuse me, samples from the uniform distribution to, to decide, hey, did they get it right on that trial or did they get it wrong on that trial? So how do we generate samples from a uniform distribution? Well, let's have a look. What we're going to use is we're going to use NumPy random generator, uh, a random number generator from the uniform distribution. And as we can see here, uh, it, we're going to draw samples from a uniform distribution and it's a half open interval. So what does this mean? Well. What we're going to do is we're going to draw from a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. And the half open interval means that our, our samples can include 0, but they will go all the way up to, but not include 1. Okay, And every single number between 0 and 1 are as equally likely to appear in our samples. Okay, So this is what we're going to, to, um, to use as we um, sample from the uniform distribution. So let's get cracking. We're gonna we're gonna generate say like a thousand samples. That should be more than enough. Um, we're not going to have our psychometric our actual experiment psychometric experiment go for a thousand trials. That's really long. But look, we'll just go to a, a thousand and then whatever we don't use, so we don't use it's, it's not going to be an issue for us. So uh, we need to import some things. So let's import um, some um, some help. So we're going to import um, OS and we're going to import from date time, import date time. And if you're familiar with my programs from before, you know I do two things at the start typically. Um, we're going to pass CLS to the system if uh, OS.name equals NT. So if you're running a Windows machine, it will pass CLS and uh, that will clear the command prompt out output. So if you've got um, errors from before, um, basically this is going to clear those errors and just give you a, a you know a fresh um, a fresh uh, 
a fresh look at what's happening when you've just most recently run that program. Uh, but if we're not running Windows NT, so NT is for Windows machines, um, so else we're going to pass clear. So now this one line of code is going to work on Mac and Linux distros and also your Windows machine. Either way, we're going to clear the output. And the other thing that I like to do is um, date time dot now is I like to just print out, hey, string format the time. I just want to print out, hey, you ran this program at this certain time. So just in case we can just look to see, oh yeah, this is the most recent time we've run this um, program. So I want um, hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so when you're using Visual Studio Code, I've saved this as a .py file, okay, on the hard drive. And if I want to run it, I just hit the right-facing triangle there. And as we can see here, we've cleaned, cleared the terminal output and it's printed out 13, 45, and 40 seconds, and that's the correct time. So great. Um, we're, we're, we're starting um, really from a blank sheet of paper, basically, so to speak. Uh, what did we want to do in this video? We want to uh, get some samples from the uniform distribution. Right, okay, well, let's do that. So now uh, let's um, sample uh, from uniform, uniform distribution, Bouchon. And we wanted a thousand samples. Okay, so because we've got a thousand samples coming in, we will need an array, or it's essentially going to be a, a list or an array of responses. So we don't need to pre allocate any memory for this. We can just basically get Python to do it on the fly. So we'll just call it something like um, subject response equals, um, well, how do we do it before? Let's have a look at the documentation. We needed, ah, well, we needed NumPy. We needed the uniform from NumPy. So what we're going to do is we're going to import NumPy. So standard way of doing that is import NumPy as MP. Okay, great. Now, what I'm going to do right at the start is I'm going to actually um, set the print options for, for NumPy at the start. So MP dot set uh, print set underscore print options okay and we're going to suppress equals true so this is going to basically stop it from um, expressing the float numbers okay or decimal numbers I guess as um, scientific notations we're just going to have it as decimals okay so this is what uh, this is what this print options is going to do for us uh, so um, back to here we'll go we want MP dot um, uniform Okay, actually it's from a random, so random dot uniform. Now we need to give it the low value, so we want to go between zero, and remember it will include zero, and we want to end at one. It's not going to include one, but it's going to go all the way up to one, and the number that we want equals a thousand, so we want uh, a thousand samples from the distribution between zero and one. So let's do that, and let's print that out. Sub response resp. And the other thing that we'll do is we'll print out the length of this response. So len sub response, because hopefully we should have an array that has a thousand items in it. So we run that um, unexpected indent. Oh, okay. So what I've done is I've accidentally gone across. So let's go back here. I don't know how that happened, but that's not a problem. Okay. So hopefully this should work. So here we go. It's all run through there quite well. Let's just expand this up. So here we go. We've got all these samples, 0 0.4298, 2105, 0.535, So these are all samples taken from the uniform distribution. You see we've got some high ones here, 0 0.838, and we've got some low ones here, 0 0.009. So great. How many items do we have in this array? Well, we've got a thousand there. Brilliant. Okay, so we've done it. But let's have a look at these numbers. <laughs> these numbers are really, really long. You know, 0.88731324. I don't need them to be that long. Let's truncate these, or let's round these numbers to, say, four decimal places. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can... Uh, let's go numpy.a round. Okay, so we're going to round these numbers, and then at the end, we're going to say we want it to four decimal places. So command S, that saves that. We'll run this again. So hopefully now what's going to happen is it will truncate it to four decimal places. So here we go. We've got that here, 0.3498. So that's a little bit more tasteful for us. It's, you know, it's, they're not so long and four decimal places is perfectly reasonable for us. We could set it to two decimal places. That's probably fine as well if you want to do that. Right. So we are now generating um, samples from the uniform distribution and we'll, we will use this later on. Okay, but let's just see 
let's just firstly see if we are actually generating, you know, a uniform distribution. So the way that we can do that just visually is we can just plot this. So plot dot plot. Uh, actually, we want plot dot histogram, and we want sub response. And the color will be. Uh, we'll make the bars black. Okay, and we'll align it to the mid. Uh, oh, not a link. Align. Uh, so we'll align all the bars in our histogram to the midpoint. Okay. Now uh, we're using plot here, so we need to import obviously um, import mat plot lib dot pi plot as plt. I'm not using figure and axes here. We'll just throw something up. We're going to delete this in a little bit anyway. Um, and we probably don't need anything else, so we'll just go plot.show. We just want to see what happens. Command S that. So we're going to generate the samples, and then we're just going to plot this to see, hey, are the bars roughly equal across that whole distribution? So remember, we're going between 0 and 1. And yeah, the numbers are roughly equal. Can you see that there? Let's have a look. Um, I'll go like this. Uh, actually, sorry, I'll go over here. Yep, you can see that. Great. So yeah, within within reason, it looks like that we've got a, an equal number of responses at, at each of those um, bins there. Okay, great. So I'll just close out of that. We don't need to see that again. All right, so Command S again, that. All right, now, <clears throat> what we're gonna do as well is we'll get into the habit now of putting it into a function. So uh, we can just call a function and we sort of modularize all of our code instead of having this super long um, set of code come through. So let's put this into a function. So we'll define a function and we'll go def and we'll say um, sub response. Now we don't need to pass it any um, parameters here and we'll put a doc string at the front. So dot 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 and we'll return a thousand samples from the uniform uh, distribution um, and it's going to be over the uh, 0 to 1 okay range and it's not going to include 1 so here we go we don't need this comment now and we need to tab that in 1 and what we can do is we can just return uh, return this like that so it's a very simple function um, and then since whenever we want to run this we'll just run um, sub response resp but because we are returning uh, a value here, um, we need to basically put it into a variable. So we'll just say sub, uh, we'll just call it response here, something like that, command S. And so if we print this out now, print RESP, we should now hopefully get our thousand things. Ah, invalid sent, oh, of course. We don't, uh, we don't want this. So what we'll do is we will, uh, we will take that out. So we'll go across one and then we'll just return this. So we'll put it into two, two steps there. So sub return, sub resp. Okay, so this should work now. So when we do this, it will print out our thousand, uh, our thousand samples there. So whenever we want to call a thousand responses from the uniform distribution, we just have to call that function and um, put it into an array here or a variable which will be an array because that's what we're returning. So we'll leave this video here. We have now done the first of six videos. We have a thousand samples from the uniform distribution, um, a half open interval between zero and one. In the next video, we are going to create our Gaussian model using a, a cumulative distribution function and uh, we'll get cracking onto that. All right, I'll leave this video here and we'll get started on the next one. All right, I'll catch you later.